Okay, dear colleagues, uh, let's continue. And I'm glad to introduce our second speaker, uh, Mr. Professor Stanislav Ivanov, uh, Vice Rector uh, for Research at the Varna University of Management uh, from Sami, Bulgaria. So uh, let me give a floor, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Stanislav Ivanov, and I will talk today about robonomics, principles, benefits, challenges, and uh, solutions. Um, I am professor and vice rector research at Varna University of Management and uh, founder and editor in chief of two academic journals European Journal of Tourism Research, indexed in Scopus and Web of Science and one newly launched journal, Robonomics, the Journal of the Automated Economy. Uh, um, this is a, a recent book published last year on robots, artificial intelligence, and service automation in travel, tourism, and hospitality. You may see the reaction of ladies when they see the book and the reaction of uh, robots. So the robots have arrived. And when we hear the word robot, many people think about R2D2, C3PO, and uh, such uh, cute robots, but we don't uh, talk, uh, we will not talk about such robots here. Other people th um, think about uh, uh, terminators that will come and kill us. Of course, this generates a lot of billions of dollars for Hollywood, but we are not talking about such robots. And of course, a third group of people, they think about uh, uh, conscious robots, like are the new Olivo from uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, books, but we don't talk about such robots. We talk about much more um, simple ways of uh, automation. Uh, automation technologies in the form of robots, artificial intelligence, and uh, other automation technologies, they enter various industries. For example, in manufacturing, Many cars, they are practically produced mostly by robots rather than human employees. This means that uh, uh, many of the jobs in manufacturing are practically replaced by automation, not by migrants. Also, robots are used in warehousing, supply and logistics, or in agriculture, or in uh, transportation, autonomous cars. This will be one of the uh, major game changers in the world, autonomous vehicles, because it will, repl it will uh, transform cities and uh, the whole logistics sector, transportation. But also in medicine, uh, robots are used by surgeons to make uh, surgeries. And uh, robots are also the dream of uh, every single general in the world. Uh, they want to be able to bomb the enemies without uh, risking the lives of uh, their own soldiers. And this is the dream of uh, every housewife and uh, husband. Uh, uh, vacuum cleaning robots uh, that, uh, that uh, do the vacuum cleaning at home instead of us. But of course, robots are used in swimming pools, for cutting grass in gardens, as guards. Of course, uh, a robotic guard will not arrest you, but... Uh, as a, vigilant, uh, as a vigilant robot, it will report you uh, wherever necessary. Also, robots are used for parcel delivery. This is where competition currently takes place, the last mile delivery from the, um, uh, from the warehouse to the home of uh, the customers. Also, robots are used for education, in entertainment, also in services like hotels. Uh, for example, Henne Hotel um, in, uh, was uh, launched in, uh, was, uh, was opened in uh, March 2015, and it is staffed by robots. However, in January 2019, it turned off most of, uh, probably more than half of their robots, because they created more work for its uh, uh, employees, for its human employees. That's why uh, robots need to be used very carefully. But also, robots can be used in restaurants. Uh, the, uh, the robot to the left uh, is, uh, is actually produced in Russia, in Perm, by Promobot company. Uh, also, robots can be used for provision of information in the service industries. You see one robot uh, uh, that, um, that is providing information at Munich airport. 
but also automation can be used at airports and other transport station. Here you see uh, a photo of uh, um, uh, automated boarding gates at Gatwick uh, Airport. Also for urban transport, when you use uh, smart technology to, um, and you don't have a paper ticket, but everything is uh, automated. Also for uh, as, uh, kiosks for travel agencies and tourist information centers, where you can look for information, you can make uh, selfies and you can send uh, the photo to yourself. Also in museum and art galleries, uh, you can have robots, but also you can have virtual and augmented reality. I, uh, the photo to, uh, uh, on the left is, uh, I, I took practically this one last year at uh, Ural Federal University at uh, the museum there. Also, you can have chatbots so that uh, instead of communicating to a human uh, um, uh, with a company, you communicate with, uh, with an algorithm, with a chatbot. Uh, Booking.com or other companies, they're, uh, they're using chatbots in order to uh, make cost efficient um, uh, communications with their customers. But also uh, uh, artificial intelligence is used for legal services especially in countries with the uh, um, Anglo-Saxon type of uh, uh, legal system, like in the US, in the UK. And uh, they help, uh, um, they help uh, and AI helps lawyers to sift through uh, thousands of uh, cases which they can use uh, in, um, in a particular lawsuit. But also AI is used in uh, search engines and in e-commerce. Probably, uh, if you have bought something from Amazon, miraculously you start receiving recommendations for compl complementary products or for products from the same product category. But also, AI can be used in financial services, especially in high frequency trade when financial positions are opened and closed within milliseconds, which is much faster than the human brain can practically process information. Also, more recently, in the last few years, we have voice activated uh, technologies so that um, you talk to uh, your Echo Dot, so uh, equipped with uh, Alexa software, so that uh, instead of uh, pushing buttons. Also, you have in journalism, where not only articles can be written by artificial intelligence, but also the TV anchors uh, can be computer generated. And of course, we may have smart looking and attentive robotic students. And uh, robots can be used in, um, for religious services where you don't have priests and also for sexual services. You never have complaints from these robots. So uh, uh, um, the tendency to use uh, robots, artificial intelligence and automation technologies in the production of goods and services will accelerate in the future until society reaches a point when all, or if not all, an overwhelming share of the goods and services are produced by Raya technologies with limited human involvement. Such an economic system based on robots, artificial intelligence and automation is called robonomics. So to put it in, uh, in a more formal way, robonomics is an economic system that uses robots, AI and automation technologies as production factor instead of human labor. So why use uh, automation technologies? This is probably the most important number in uh, the history of uh, mankind. It's not the price of gold, it's not an exchange rate, it's not the unemployment rate or anything. It's the number of children per woman. And since 1966, uh, six, it is plummeting. What happens? This is a summary. Uh, in order to have a constant population, we need something like slightly more than two kids per woman. Two kids replace the parents slightly, uh, and 0 0.1, they replace, uh, they compensate for the child mortality until uh, kids reach the age uh, of 18. So considering a constant mortality rate, we need something like 2.1 kids per woman in order to keep the population stable. However, in many countries, we have significantly uh, we have birth rates which are significantly below this one. The worst case, this is uh, South Korea, where we have less than one kid per woman. It means, it means that 
practically the number of kids that they have uh, that they have there do not even replace uh, uh, the mothers. We are not talking even about the fathers here. If you see Bulgaria and Russian Federation, we have 1.56, 1.57, approximately the same birth rate. Uh, but this birth rate is 25, 30% lower than it's necessary in order, to co uh, in order to keep the population stable. That's why in these countries, population is declining. Uh, and uh, all, uh, we can expect that it will be declining. We have other countries where we have much higher birth rates. So what are the options for these declining populations? Practically, we have three possible solutions produce people, import people, or substitute people as a production factor. Uh, produce people in the natural biological process will require something like uh, 20, 25 years until people reach the labor market and, uh, pro but, uh, and probably 15, 20 years more until uh, the, uh, the negative trends on the labor market are compensated. So it's a long-term decision, but it's highly, po but it's, uh, highly politically charged. Of course, we, through immigration, we can import people, but it, it, it's a quick, short-term decision, but it may create a lot of social resistance. And finally, the third option is substitute people as a production factor. And this is what is the major driver of the robonomic economic system. What my research has shown up to now, I, uh, I have not cited it uh, here, but uh, I can provide uh, this um, Additionally, automation technologies, they compensate for the unborn children. Companies will be forced to use automation technologies, not because they want it, but because they do not have a choice. Some prior studies related to the robonomic economic system. We have opposing views of technological progress. The researchers' attitudes towards the advances of robots, artificial intelligence, and automation technologies range from the positive appraisal of liberating humans, of manual labor, creating new business opportunities. This is one extreme. On the other extreme, we have fear of popularizing and making humans obsolete in a fully robotized society. So we have the optimists like uh, the, this book, The Second Machine Age, or The Fourth Industrial Rev Revolution by Karl Schwab. Uh, other books uh, that uh, show more optimistic appraisal of technological progress. But of course, we have the pessimists who consider that uh, uh, artificial intelligence, automation, robots, they will be our final invention. And uh, they oppose technology and humanity. But we have another group, a third group of researchers that say that we should not fear, uh, we should not fear technology, but we will merge with it. So this is the transhumanists. But we also have the disillusionment uh, that say that transhumanism is, um, a, um, is just an illusion and this will never happen. Also, we have a lot of research that is done uh, about the use of artificial intelligence and robotics in economic theory uh, with specialized focus in different industries like finances, uh, tourism, also about the political economy and the change of power because of the use of robots and automation technologies. The application of robotics in different fields from love to warfare, even the legal issues that are raised by the use of automation technologies. Should robots have rights? How do we regulate artificial intelligence, what, how the legal system should change in order to address the challenges that automation artificial intelligence raise. There are many conferences that are organized uh, on, uh, on this topic. Books are published on basic income as a one way to, um, which is one of the instruments to come to overcome the challenges of uh, uh, robonomics or about the use of uh, robots and, uh, and uh, artificial intelligence in warfare. Even humanities deal with robotics. One of the emerging fields, this is robot ethics. Uh, or, of course, sex with robots. And even Dan Brown incorporated artificial intelligence as a character of his book. I suppose you have read this book, so probably I have put here a sign spoiler.
So robonomics is inevitable. When it will happen, we are not sure, but uh, uh, all the factors and all the trends show that it is uh, going to happen at some point in the future. And um, a few years ago, uh, the executive office of the, the president of the US, this is the, pr the previous administration, published several reports. I have uh, included the covers of uh, two of them regarding the preparation of the US economy for the future of artificial intelligence. In 2017, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and, Develop and Development published a separate report about the next production revolution and how governments, businesses, companies, organizations, they need to, um, uh, they, they need to adapt to the new realities and uh, to reorganize to the new challenges that uh, are coming in the next uh, decades. So what are the principles of robonomics? First, we have high level of automation. This means that uh, we will have you active use a variety of single multipurpose industrial service social robots. It means that all or most of the products, goods and services are pro produced or provided by robots, artificial intelligence and automation technologies. This does not mean that humans will disappear. It only means that most of these services, probably 80, 90%, will be provided by technologies. Of course, it also does not mean that it will be robots or conscious robots that will be doing this. No, many of the services will be provided by simple automation like kiosks. Other services will be provided by chatbots or, uh, or artificial intelligence, but only few of, uh, uh, but uh, industrial robots will, manufac will manufacture many of the goods, but service robots, uh, they'll, uh, but service all robots will also be used. Also, in robonomic economic system, we shall have high cost efficiency of production, economically efficient on-demand single or, four or few units production of some goods. If now we, we need several thousands or several hundreds of thousands of units to be produced in, in a factory, in order this factory to be economically efficient, just compare if we produce if we produce one uh, one uh, a ferrari or volkswagen we need uh, how many ferraris can be produced per year what factory you need and uh, how many uh, volkswagens you can produce with uh, with robots practically uh, this the economies of scale here determine uh, much the price and in a robonomic economic system which uh, this cost production will be very high efficient but also we shall have small and dispersed factories close to the consumers. This means that in the future, we may see factories that are moving closer to the consumers. And instead of having, uh, let's say, a few large uh, factories uh, where labor is cheap, we shall have smaller factories. They will be more dispersed, but they will be close to the markets. So, this is uh, one figure that, that shows how the efficient production capacity which of factories is uh, going to change. If this is, these are the costs uh, per unit on the vertical, and we have the production capacity on the horizontal line, we see that the costs per unit, they decrease with the production capacity. And uh, initially, we will have an, uh, an efficient production capacity, which is determined between EPC1, which is uh, um, a capacity where you, we have the, um, the cost per unit, which are sufficiently low, and the increase of, the, of uh, the capacity of the factory is not decreasing sufficiently the cost per unit. Now, with uh, the use of robots, artificial intelligence, and automation technologies, this graph A is moved, is shifted downwards to graph B, so that the efficient production capacity is decreased from EPC1 to EPC2. This means that, is, uh, that we can produce the same amount of, uh, we can produce uh, goods with, at the same price, but with uh, lower capacity of uh, the factory. But also regarding services, we shall have high level of standardization of services with strict algorithmization of the service provision. 
And this is because the right technologies are less flexible compared to human employees. Labor and capital abundance are not competitive advantages, but knowledge and creativity. Because when you have small factories, when you have uh, strict standardization, where you, or whether you have cheap labor or whether you have a lot of, uh, a lot of potential human employees or uh, a lot of uh, financial resources, this is not creating competitive advantage for the country. It will be the knowledge and creativity of people there. But also we shall have fewer but more knowledge intensive uh, jobs. Also, we shall have disconnection between employment and incomes. Employment will not be the major source of uh, incomes. And this is because most many people will probably find, uh, will need to find other way of uh, receiving income, which I'll, we discuss a little bit uh, later. So what are the drivers of uh, robonomics? We can divide them into four groups, macroenvironmental, micro, corporate, and uh, psychological factors. So the macroenvironmental factors are these. These are from the external environment, which uh, uh, companies cannot control. First, this is technology. This is the advances in the right technologies. If we consider the technology 50 years ago and the technologies now, they have improved significantly. Some of the things like automated communications, which were not possible 50 years ago, are now quite possible. And that's why companies are using chatbots. But also demography. This is, uh, from my perspective, this is the major driver of a robonomic economic system. But also we can have political factors. For example, governmental control on populations. For, uh, so comp uh, so uh, governments uh, that uh, have greater desire to control um, populations will probably push the robonomic economic system. But also the legal framework. Uh, sometimes the current laws, they stimulate, uh, they stimulate automation. For example, anti-discrimination laws. Uh, when you use, uh, when you have uh, uh, human employees in a company, you always have potential legal lawsuits uh, based on uh, discrimination, be it uh, age, gender, uh, religious, uh, uh, religion, sexual orientation, race, or any other or ethnicity or any other uh, um, source of uh, or any other reason of uh, discrimination. But when you have robots or chatbots or kiosks, that's not that's uh, not a problem. So uh, probably at one point these anti-discrimination laws will be also uh, uh, stimulate companies to use uh, automation technologies. But also labor laws, uh, hiring and firing employees uh, in many countries is very difficult. But hiring and firing a robot is extremely easy. Hiring, you sign a contract with the company, or firing, you just turn off uh, the button of uh, the robot. Taxation, the increases, the increase in uh, labor in uh, labor-related costs, uh, in labor-related taxes, also is uh, driving uh, the substitution of uh, labor for automation technologies. But also culture and society. Some Eastern Eastern culture, Eastern Asian cultures, they are more receptive to uh, riot technologies. So that's why in Japan, South Korea, China, we see this uh, greater acceptance of automation technologies compared to other countries. Microenvironmental factors. First, this is the labor market. Lack of sufficient and qualified uh, human employees. This is because of uh, demography. Competitive pressure. The adoption of right technologies by competitors. When, uh, when your competitors are using automation and they're gaining a competitive advantage, why should you stay behind? And also customers, their acceptance of uh, right technologies, they get used to, to this, to, to these technologies. Corporate level factors, they largely relate, relate to the economic efficiency, cost efficiency, productivity, operations management. And uh, when automation technologies, when they make the lives of uh, operations managers easier, and uh, when they improve the bottom line of companies, then Com then uh, companies have a stimuli to use uh, automation technologies. 
but also we have psychological factors that do not relate to uh, any economic efficiency or loss. It, it may be just the preferences of managers to use robots, automation and technologies instead of uh, human employees. It may be just in uh, their character. So uh, sometimes people ask me, how will this uh, robonomic economic system happen? Of course, it will not happen overnight. It's not like uh, arrival of aliens. It's a gradual process. So we have adoption of automation technologies by individual companies in an industry. Then we have the spread of these technologies among other companies in an industry. But we also have spread of these technologies among industries and among countries. So uh, if we can, if we if we, uh, we, we see that uh, uh, the the computer industry was one of the and manufacturing especially excuse me manufacturing was one of the first uh, industries to introduce the, to introduce robots. But later on, they spilled uh, these uh, um, robots. They were introduced in service industries uh, as well, but not in all service industries. Uh, um, and uh, some service industries industries were um, adopted them earlier, others later. And uh, for example, tourism is yet to introduce uh, automation technologies at a greater um, scale. But also we shall have spillover effects of right technologies from developed to developing economies in the form of substitution of low cost labor in developing countries for automated factories in developed economies and bots. For example, one, co uh, one company based in the US, instead of, having, uh, instead of outsourcing its uh, call center in uh, India and have uh, there, let's say 1000 uh, employees, it may have, uh, it, it may develop a much more complicated chatbot and uh, uh, with uh, several tens of software engineers, which are located uh, in uh, the US. So what are the benefits of an uh, uh, a robonomic economic system? We can divide them in the short term and long term. The same is with challenges. We can, the short term benefits, we have decrease in costs and prices, we also have improved environmental sustainability of production because of uh, the efficiencies that uh, automation technologies provide. But also we have long-term benefits, like people are liberated of hard manual labor, but also drastic increase of labor time, of leisure time, because practically the same number of goods and services, they can be produced with fewer working hours. We can have time for creative pleasure activities. Uh, just imagine how things changed for the for the last uh, century and century and a half regarding uh, the work world, uh, the number of hours worked, and um, it practically decreased significantly. Um, but also less or no work related stress, improved health, increased life expectancy. But also, a robonomic economic system provides opportunities to develop a global government and global citizenship, and also accelerated space exploration based on robots. But also, a robonomic economic system has a dark side, and it needs to be uh, considered as well. What are the challenges? Probably the most important, this is unemployment and a relative overpopulation. Fewer human employees and lower salaries. One um, seminal research that was made by uh, uh, Frey and Osborne in 2012, but published in 2017 uh, in one of the leading journals, assessed that uh, nearly 50% of the US jobs can be practically automated. So uh, this means uh, that uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of jobs in uh, the US are at risk of uh, being substituted by, by AI. But similar numbers were reported after that uh, for other countries uh, as well. And the introduction of robots and artificial intelligence automation, they kind of evaluated that practically it surpassed, it surpassed salaries, it decreased salaries of human employees. Other problems, we may have psychological problems of people who find themselves with too much free time. 
yes, often we say, we say that we want free time, but when we have too much free time, we shall enjoy it, let's say one, two, three weeks, one month. But after that, the brain needs to be preoccupied with something. So when people have too much free time, nothing to do, no need to work, then uh, such uh, psychological problems uh, may arise. Uh, fear, social unrest, political instability, for uh, riots uh, inevitable, but also migration from people from countries where you, you have very high unemployment to, to countries where you have uh, uh, jobs for human employees. And ultimately, in extreme cases, we may have wars. Other challenges, we may have functional illiteracy. Humans may forget how to do things once robots do them. A hundred years ago, males, uh, probably more than, more than hundred years ago, males had to know how to, how to ride a horse. But now, I'm sure that probably less than 5% of uh, men know how to ride a horse. So we, we lose this, uh, this knowledge and this skill. But also division of society between employed and unemployed people, but also challenges of social values. Is human life valuable? Do we need other people to satisfy our needs when we have robots, AI, and automation technologies? What will happen with, uh, um, with uh, population when, um, when, you need, uh, when you can use robots or AI virtual reality to communicate or even to make sex? Possible significant decrease in population in the long term. This is also uh, a pos uh, possibility. So what are the solutions to the challenges of uh, robonomics? Previous literature has identified many possible solutions to technological unemployment. Many of these sound like uh, bureaucratic uh, um, uh, solutions, like mendentic employment, government job creation, work sharing, employment, impact statements, uh, tax policies, financial incentives for job creation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, however, these solutions, they are wonderful on the road to robonomic system. But uh, in order to mitigate the impacts of technological employment, they de can decrease, they can mitigate these impacts only in the short term. But when robots, AI, automation technologies produce most of the goods and services, when you cannot provide jobs for probably 70, 80% of populations, what happens? We can't use uh, these tools. We can have other solutions. First, constant and fluid free lifelong education in order to keep uh, in order in order to uh, keep people skilled and uh, be able to perform various uh, tasks really which uh, cannot be automated but also entertainment tourism and leisure activities volunteering these instruments they are necessary and they are compulsory in order to keep people busy when they have uh, um, a lot of free time because when you have when people have a lot of free time uh, they start thinking uh, uh, they may start thinking about revolutions uh, also robot based taxation universal basic income birth control birthright patent so uh, and uh, a person will need probably uh, to buy a patent in order to reproduce or redefinition of human rights uh, what about taxation Bill Gates was uh, one of the uh, most prominent uh, um, supporters of uh, robot taxation. However, I'm personally skeptical towards uh, this solution because uh, you need to provide a very strict um, uh, legal definition of what is a robot. And once you have such a legal definition, robotic manufacturers, they, may, they can make changes in their robots in such a way so that the robots fall outside of this uh, definition and uh, the, this new technology will, be, will not be taxed. Uh, so uh, it will be uh, always a, a game uh, between robot manufacturer and uh, the tax authorities. So I personally don't think this is workable in the long run. Universal basic income is one of the, um, uh, has many supporters. It means that every person in the country provide, uh, receives a certain amount of money, regardless whether he or she works. For let's say that uh, the Russian government decides that every uh, Russian citizen receives every month 500 euros 
or um, I don't know how much uh, this is in rubles, no questions asked, uh, every person in the country. So what are the advantages? Provides income for all people in a society and serves as a social safety net. It's also easy to administer, unlike social security payments now, unlike uh, which are uh, unlike taxation policies, uh, the taxation laws, which are quite complicated. However, it has disadvantages, like it requires a lot of resources to finance. Also, uh, basic income may kill people stimulated to work and improve their skills. Uh, so they may become permanently unemployable. Yeah, un unemployable. Some uh, preliminary research on the topic of uh, universal basic income provides uh, mixed results depending on the country where they were made. But also migration and, sub sub and uh, subsequent social tension if UB is introduced to in one of your countries only without strict migration control. If Russia introduces uh, universal basic income and other countries do not, I'm sure that, they, uh, that uh, um, many foreigners may wish to receive Russian citizenship because of uh, this. Of course, there are other uh, things which may sound uh, quite uh, dark solutions, but also at one point, governments may, uh, uh, may need to consider this, like the redefinition of human rights. Uh, for example, this is just a hypothetical situation. It doesn't mean that it will happen in reality, but it's a possibility considering uh, the current uh, development of political science and uh, uh, economic theory. We can have uh, redefinition of uh, human rights when the biological, political, and economic rights, when they are decoupled and they do not go, uh, and they are not automatic. For example, the biological right to reproduce, political right to vote, and economic uh, right to receive basic income. So uh, practical, if uh, we have uh, this um, yes or no option for each of these rights, practically we have eight possible situations. In, uh, in half of the situations, we have a demographic crisis. In the, other, in the other half, we either have a country default or mass poverty. And uh, the only stable solution that, um, that the redefinition of uh, human rights uh, can provide is, we, is if we provide these two, two, two solutions simultaneously. Situation to when people uh, have uh, the right to reproduce, have the right to vote, but they don't have the right to uh, receive basic income, or they don't have the right to reproduce, they do not have uh, the right to vote, but yes, they have the right to receive income. So, uh, depending depending on government policies within the in the next uh, decades and uh, the development of technology, and uh, whether some of the forecasts. Uh, will uh, actually materialize, governments um, uh, may raise uh, these two options. People self-select whether they want the cozy life without work, but subject to sterilization and without the right to vote, or they will not receive any guaranteed income, but they have the right to vote and uh, the right to reproduce. Of course, the future is not written. It depends on us, but we should always we should always remember that the queue for comforting cries is always longer than the queue for unpleasant truths. So robots have a right and are here to stay. Some references, further reading, and thank you for the attention and I'm available for questions. Thank you so much. Okay. Vladimir? So here, here we are. So uh, have you already started to answer questions? Yes, I am already. OK. Uh, so we have, yeah. uh, what? I don't see questions in the chat, or probably they will come. 
Uh, there are questions, three questions, and uh, questions okay. and answers, as you see. Uh, first okay. question was from me. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I so, uh, I, I described a uh, quite funny, ridiculous situation in Russia when our officials often say that uh, in territory that is uh, sparsely populated and where there are no, where, where there are problems with hiring specialists, uh, the technical revolution will pass faster and robots will be used. Uh, but uh, the main question, uh, where to get specialists uh, to create and maintain these uh, robots and this equipment? So uh, what uh, could be a future in this case? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, uh, this is a fantastic question because uh, it relates to the so-called ironies of automation. It's a, it's a one philosophical concept that uh, says that, okay, we develop uh, automation but it creates problems because some tasks are not automated and you need specialists in order to develop this uh, well i think that uh, you don't need you don't you can manufacture the rope you don't need to well robots can be manufactured in one place and they can be used at another place so you will you may have in siberia uh, you can use the robots in Siberia for uh, different reasons, for, for different purposes. But uh, uh, this, but the robots does not; uh, they don't need to be produced there. Probably they will need to; they will need to be maintained there. And this is a uh, it's a matter of uh, design of uh, the robot. So if you have robots which are with uh, compatible parts, it will be like the cars. When the, when the first cars were introduced, it was very difficult to maintain the cars. You needed a high specialist, etc. But now, uh, but now uh, it's relatively easy to make some of the changes. You can change your tire. You can, you can put oil. So it, this is possible. And also not all things uh, uh, need to be done by robots. Some of the things can be done um, with simple automation technologies and also with uh, bots or whatever. So it's not necessarily uh, that way. OK, returning to e-learning issues. Next question from Maria. Uh, we have just discussed e-learning with the previous speaker as an environment. Can robonomics create a useful environment for a student from the moment he or she wakes up, uh, turns on the phone, and comes back uh, home after university? Uh, Zvarikin, the inventor of TV, in his memories regretted uh, that his invention has been used for entertainment while it could be used for develop of, uh, and, and learning. Uh, could it, couldn't it be the same with robots? What do you think? Uh, yes. Um, practically, um, could be used for development. So robots can be whether robots can be used for development and learning. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the question, as far as I understand it. I guess that uh, there are two questions. First, uh, yes. first one is about e-learning environment. E -learning. How we can implement rob robonomics, and then and then, and then will it work? Uh, will yes. it work? Uh, practically, it's already done. Practically, it's already done. And uh, uh, my personal belief is that everything that can that can be subject to algorithm sorry that, that that can be subject to algorithmization it's everything that uh, for which you can develop an algorithm how things can be done can be automated and it will be automated regardless whether we want it or not so yes teachers will go the way of the horses uh, we we'll, uh, it will be uh, our jobs will be uh, automated as well not by robots but by uh, technology uh, and in a different way we can create uh, e-learning is uh, developing, and this is the future. Uh, when uh, Coursera started, if I remember it, 20, 2012, and there were also other platforms for uh, massive online courses. Uh, first, they, they, uh, first they, there was a huge hype around them. Uh, uh, then it was a little bit of disillusionment, but now the coronavirus served as a, uh, uh, as uh, the biggest uh, driver of digitalization of uh, education. Previously, we were thinking that only, hu that, uh, that only human lecturers can provide this uh, learning experience. 
but uh, but uh, during the last few months we we understood that uh, moving online is extremely easy it's a matter of technology it's a matter of uh, software design uh, all these applications to be connected and um, and to be um, Mm. and the experience the learning experience to be to be small regarding whether you, uh, robots can be used for development and learning this is the this is the idea so rob uh, the idea of robots is to uh, to have uh, to replace the dirty though dangerous and repetitive tasks uh, this is for industrial robots for service robots we have also the interaction uh, also uh, compensating for the lack of uh, employees, but also uh, robots, they can be used in education for improving and learning. There is no problem even later when, uh, when robots become sufficiently cheap also to have uh, a robot as a companion at home, which uh, can connect uh, via the cloud and uh, also help with uh, education and uh, learning and development. So, but but this is valid for every technology. So it's not only e-learning, it's not only robots, it's not only TV. It's the same with the smartphones. Uh, I, I'm sure that the first person who invented the knife uh, uh, didn't imagine what uh, that knives will be used also, uh, not only to kill animals for food, but also to kill humans in wars. So this is valid. These unintentional consequences are valid for. Uh, every technology. Okay, uh, you know that I'm not uh, an engineer or mathematic. I'm historian. I'm humanitarian, and these humanitarians always have too many questions and suspicious about uh, technical revolution and so on, and uh, me as well. So, uh, um, according to uh, some theories, um, you know, people, human beings, are not evaluate but they uh, regret it. So, uh, and when we invent something uh, in technology like uh, robots or, or uh, computers, uh, it made us like uh, human beings more lazy, uh, more uh, thick probably. Uh, and uh, this uh, technical revolution uh, as a result uh, affect us uh, uh, like, uh, Humans like uh, human beings, not not positive, even uh, negative. What do you think about uh, this yeah. ergonomics in this context? Yeah, uh, this is a fantastic question, and this is uh, usually one of the critics against uh, technology in the long term. I can say several things. First, when we talk about evolution, you know that we are the product of a four billion years of evolution. Uh, evolution happens slowly. So if we compare, so if we think about uh, the knowledge and skills, and uh, even in biological terms, how we changed in the last, uh, let's say, centuries, this is insignificant compared to the uh, to the millions of years of uh, uh, evolution in, in that context. So it's very difficult to make such uh, conclusions. Probably, if uh, whether we regress or not, if we consider the brain size. Uh, yeah, if, but uh, of course, uh, 200,000 uh, um, years ago, humans, some of the human species, because we are, um, we are descendants of uh, one of these this, uh, humanoid species, uh, they had much larger brains, but uh, we achieve uh, much more with smaller brains. So practically, we are more efficient. So if we consider efficiency, uh, biological efficiency we may say that we evolved uh, a lot so whether the whether technology will will hinder human evolution it's also a matter of discussion because it may we may say that uh, some people speculate this is the transhumanism that we and technology will merge biology and technology will merge into one but also we may say that biological evolution created humans in order to create the next step, evolution to zero, where uh, um, practically the new species will be digital, it will not be carbon based. So, uh, yeah, but uh, so I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid of this one, it of uh, that humans will regress. 
practically here we can we can have some reasonable social forecasts for the next 50 hundred years nothing more okay. evolution wor works in millennia it doesn't work in centuries but uh, talking about demography you uh, talk uh, in your presentation uh, about uh, numbers of uh, children studies in different uh, states and uh, we can see that uh, such developed uh, countries, uh, uh, IT countries as South Korea, Japan, uh, have has some um, Problem. issues, problems, yeah. yes, with demography. Uh, maybe it's uh, a result of this uh, technological revolution and uh, changes in mind because uh, people. Uh, start uh, recognize our environment in new way uh, with robots with uh, machines as they uh, correct the traditional um, uh, how to say uh, traditions mm -hmm. of their mind uh, what do you think about this uh, i think it's a, a two-way relationship demography defined uh, uh, stimulates automation automation has a impact on demography so countries where you have declining population, they will be forced to use automation technologies. Uh, okay, uh, Japan is one example, but we also have the example of China. Uh, because of uh, the one-child policy they introduced in 1978, now they have, uh, uh, they have lack of millions of uh, employees 40 years later. And, and uh, now they had to reverse that situation. But for 40 years, now they are out uh, a second child a few years ago. But uh, when for 40 years people had uh, one child and uh, this social change cannot be, uh, this social habit cannot be uh, changed so easily. And uh, companies there, they, they are forced to use uh, automation regardless whether they want it. However, once automation is used, uh, some uh, they, there was some research that showed that uh, if we have automation, highly automated, that's when people will have more free time. But if this is coupled with uh, universal basic income, so that people know that they do not need to work in order to have uh, decent income, not very high, but decent, probably slightly more than the minimum income in uh, countries, there will be a, a short-term spike in birth rates because people will have time uh, to reproduce because they will they, they will not have the stress on this one. Okay, so it's possible. It's 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 a two way relationship. It's too complex to it. It's too simple to say technology is decreasing population, and um, okay, it's I a two way relationship. I see. Uh, we have two more questions. Uh, one question from Yulia. Yulia Yakovleva asked. Dear Stanislav, uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. Robots are everywhere. Robotization is expanding all life spheres. How do you think? Uh, will such a wide use of robots and artificial intelligence cause any real fear to the humans one day? Uh, we just well, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. This is wonderful. Um, this is wonderful question. Um, I'm not afraid of artificial intelligence. I'm afraid of natural stupidity. Uh, so um, technology is a tool. So we have uh, robots, artificial intelligence, automation technology, whatever. Uh, it is a tool. It is up to us humans to decide how to use it. I'm not afraid that uh, robots and AI, they will become conscious and they will kill us. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is fantastic for Hollywood, but uh, uh, but this is not. Uh, I'm skeptical that this is happen that this is going to happen. I won't say that this will not happen, but at least I don't believe it will happen in this century. Uh, it may ha it may have issues related to uh, the uh, let's say psychology that some people will uh, will be difficult to adapt. But uh, also, as I said, it's not going to happen as uh, arrival of aliens. Uh, we have a mothership uh, coming to the Earth, and we and we say, "Oh, the aliens are here." No, no, it's a gradual process. 
that will happen within uh, the next uh, decades. It will not be a revolution. Yeah, I see. Uh, so one more, uh, not question, but comments, uh, according we, uh, we've just discussed. Uh, Louisa Cullen, on the other hand, we can consider the possibility that robots can be abused as slaves by humans in the future. Uh, yeah. What do you think? Do yes, uh, uh, yeah, this is, uh, well, uh, first we need to provide a definition of what a slave is, because if this, if we talk about uh, slaves, then I can say that this pen is a slave and this bottle of water is also a slave. Uh, and uh, I abuse them a lot, I use them a lot, I don't pay them salary. We should consider that uh, robots are technology. They are not a wife. They don't have feelings, they don't have thoughts, they compute. Treating them, we can, we can, uh, treating them as, we have to treat them as tools, not as, um, not as humans. So in that case, I don't worry whether they will be treated as slaves. Uh, you can, you can leave your car in the garage and not use it for 20 years. If you want, you can destroy your car. It's your property. So I'm not afraid of this one. I see one more question from a uh, public chat, but I'm not sure that this question uh, addressed to you, but nevertheless, probably you have some ideas. Question from Marina Terriava, uh, Eva, sorry if I pronounce uh, huh? incorrect. Question from grateful physical education teachers. How do you think? Uh, it is effective to organize physical education classes remotely. Grateful for your opinion in, and interesting thoughts. Yeah. So it's it's okay. more challenging. <laughs> this is more challenging because uh, some of the things they require physical presence. So this is like uh, teaching chemistry class uh, without laboratory or teaching culinary without uh, without the cooking facilities. So teaching physical education, uh, it's uh, exactly the same. It's some of the things, some of the classes, lectures, they can be online, but you need the physical facilities in order to do this. Uh, okay, so there are no any new questions. I guess that uh that's all <laughs> yeah uh dear stanislav thank you so much for your presentation and your performance it was really uh fruitful and interesting uh hope uh to see you next time uh maybe at our university or at Warner university yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for the invitation uh, and uh, for the for the wonderful questions and uh, for the opportunity Thank you. Okay, uh, one uh, more comments for all our attenders. Uh, the attenders, right now we have, uh, we will have uh, a break for one hour. Uh, please stay with us and uh, we turn back in one hour and we continue our uh, discussions. Uh, after every session, you can um, send us feedbacks and uh, rank uh, our sessions to it, it's useful for us uh, just to improve uh, our uh, work and uh, make this conference more uh, useful. So thank you. Uh, see you. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. So.